We're going to swing it next door. J.D. Martinez, Mookie Betts sat down. Let's hear what they had to say. <laughs> I hate to say, you know, that type of thing, but it's just a reminder. Hey, you know, you, you guys' life is good. And so we have to keep that in mind and, and do everything we can to make their, their lives, you know, a, a good as well. And I think, uh, you know, the Red Sox and everybody, this whole foundation uh, does a great job in, in putting smiles on kids' faces for sure. It does seem like you, you don't need that reminder, though, because I know you do a lot. We do a lot, but, I mean, you know, it's always, it's always good to have it. Yeah. Let me ask you a baseball question, and um, I'm sure you've been asked this question a million times, but I'm wondering how much you guys talk about it. We talk every day during the course of the season. Why is this so different than what we witnessed last year where everything, <laughs> right? You're already laughing at it, J.D., but everything just seemed to work out. I'm sure you guys spent a lot of time talking amongst yourself. If you've if you been able to come to any, I mean, it's been a good week, but if you've been able to come to any type of answer as to why this is so different? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, it's a different year. For me, yeah, it's just a different year. It's, you know, everybody always wants to go back, oh, it's the same team, we're supposed to have the same results. Like, last year was special. I've never, I always say this, like, when everybody asks me how it was and I go back home and stuff like that, I, and I never thought I would say this about baseball, but, like, I felt like last year was easy. Like, and that's the last word I would ever use for a baseball season. But it just felt like everything kind of rolled our way. Every The ball always bounced. Someone always got a pinch hit, you know, home run. Any move uh, Alex would make would always work out. Yeah. You know, it just seemed like, I mean, you look at all the special moments that happened last year of guys throwing pinch hits, home run, pinch hit, home Brock, pinch hit, homer, uh, Nunez in the World Series, pinch hit off wood, homer. Like, you know what I mean? It's just so special mm -hmm. moments. And, you know, that's, that's hard, to, it's hard to, to ride for two years in a row. Um, so, you know, it's a different year. And I think this team is a good team. And I think this team could be a special, you know. Uh, you never know. Like, you just never know. There's, we're, we're a little back now, but you never know. There's still a lot of baseball left. So and you said it was so easy this year, right? I mean, last, last year was last easy. Year, yeah. So is this year hard? And do you, as it gets difficult... What's the reaction? Because you're looking at it going, man, last year everything just seemed to click. This today is a real tough day, and then you've got to deal with the next day and the next day after that, Mookie. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you know, they just I wouldn't say it's hard. It's just different challenges, and sometimes um, you just don't – you're not successful. I mean, sometimes we're not getting, we're not getting that pinch hit, um, hit, you know, or we're not going up and putting up zeros or, you know, we're not – playing defense at the right times and so I mean it's not uh nothing that we 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 can't do it's just stuff that we just haven't put together and you know it's it's kind of tough um exactly. especially with a target on your back I mean you know yeah. we're, the, we're the world champs and so um everybody that comes in is, is ready to play and you know if we're, if we're not one little one little mishap you know can uh turn into something huge and it just seems like we've had that mishap and it's turned into something big every time so Alex Core I think is famous he said it a few times guys consistently inconsistent i think he's used that phrase before yet every week we talk to him sometimes down here he is consistent every he comes in you guys we lost eight straight he comes in shaking hands hey guys how you doing that sort of alex cora is uh is he consistent with you even from last year is it is it nice to have a manager that or is he the same i should ask first i guess as last year or are you seeing a different manager no, he's the same guy. I mean, yeah. I mean, and what, how much does that mean to you, that he's not riding the wave with you and kind of getting on you when it's not going well? It means a lot. I mean, I think he's a guy that played the game. He understands it. He understands that it's not the same. It's, not, it's a different year. You know, like Mookie said, it's different challenges. Uh, and Alex understands that because he's been around for a while. And, you know, he knows that everyone's going out there and giving it their best and doing their everything they could possibly do to, for that game that day. And, you know, if it works out awesome and sometimes you know doesn't work out and but he's still the same person you know it's um you know think about some of the issues so you know i've been on teams where you know the offense was putting up a ton of points and the defense would go out there and, and they couldn't hold the lead or someone would give up an easy touchdown and i remember there was every now and then there was some animosity and definitely frustration with the fact that as good as we were we couldn't close out games because of one reason or another um and with you guys was as good as you guys are offensively you know, there's always seems to be something, whether the bullpen can't keep the lead or defensive issue or whatever it is. Has there been any frustration or animosity or how, how tough has it been for you guys just to 
I mean, still back the guys on your team and still respect them and still pull for them, even though you're, you know, it's 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 an uphill climb for you as it is now. Definitely no no animosity. I mean, um, you know, it's it's tough. I mean, it's not like they're, you know, we go out there and try and lose. You know, it's 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 tough. I mean, those guys get paid too, and so you know, I have to just keep that in mind. Like, they're they're going out and 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 trying to put up zeros, and we're going out and trying to score runs there. You know, we're we're going out and, and trying to field the ball and throw it to first or catch fly balls and whatnot. Just sometimes, you know, we're human. Sometimes we we don't do it and it just seems like this year we haven't haven't done it a lot more than, than last and um we haven't found ways to kinda of bounce back I think once uh once one thing happens it kinda of snowballs and then uh everything kinda of falls apart. Yeah, I mean I feel like you know, there obviously no animosity, frustration, I would say, yeah, because, you know, we're all competitors and everybody wants to win. But I don't think anyone else is blaming some other person or someone else. Uh, you know, everybody's going out there and doing their best. It's not like guys are messing around and going out there and trying to, you know, not caring. Like, I feel like everyone cares. When you when you guys heard that Chris Sale was out for the season, I mean, is that just a, a kick to the gut, knowing that one of your best players is – gone for the rest of the year uh you know it definitely hurts uh, it definitely hurts. <laughs> you know, <he's> just, <laughs> yeah. i mean you know. it's just the only thing you can really think now is who's the next guy up yeah. i mean we can't uh can't sit here and harp on it you know we have to uh kind of turn the page and, and move forward and hope everything's fine with, with him and you know he gets back uh gets back out there to, to play here soon or, or whenever his timetable is up but um, right now, we just have to kind of stay focused on, on, on the task at hand, and that's today. So i got to ask you guys both about Devers because, um, I, I mean, it's amazing. It was like first of May, you know, in April, you don't think he had a home run, and he was hitting 250, 260. Then since the first of May, it has been a show. Even when he gets out, it is just hard contact. It, and it, I was almost like there was no transition year. You know what I mean? There was no good year. Oh, my God, he's going to be special. It just happened like – like that, you know, what have you seen from this kid? Because it, it's been awesome to watch. Yeah, um, you know, I think uh, he's uh, matured, number one, at the plate. And, you know, the way he's viewing pitchers. And he's a lot more aware of what guys are trying to do to him than, you know, previous years where he would kind of just go up there and swing at everything. I mean, he kind of still does, but I think he's a little bit more controlled now. I think he has worked a lot on his direction and his swing and trying to clean a lot of things up. And to me, it's made a world of a difference. You know, the kid's a very talented hitter, a very talented player. You see it all the time in these sudden spurts, moments, you know, that he has. Um, but I think now as he's, you know, getting a little older, he's starting to channel it in and understand what he has to do and how he has to prepare and where his swing has to be before every game and, you know, stuff like that and, and he works hard you know he honestly does he works hard in the cage on the field in the gym he's a young kid and you know he kind of looks like he's out there yeah. kind of don't even really know what he's doing but he, he really has an idea of what he's doing out there and I think he's been doing a really good job for us I like the big deep breath he does now I think he kind of yeah. took that from you maybe a few months back because yeah. he started doing that meditation yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. we had a combo about that at the beginning because oh. he would get all worked up about it and I was like just relax. I was like, you have to settle yourself down because you get a couple strikes on you and you want to, like, your heart rate starts going up and you want to panic and, you're like, you don't want to strike out. Like, relax. You strike out, you strike out. It's okay. You know? Yeah. You're going to strike out a lot more times. Uh, you know, just try to control it. Try to channel it and calm yourself at your moments when, you're, when you feel like yourself is getting out of control. I think it's interesting. You guys, um, your job is to go up there and get your four or five at-bats every night. And try to score enough runs to win a baseball game. Our job is to sit around and talk about the team now, the team with the future. And, of course, there are opt-outs and there are contracts and everything else. And every time, this seems to come up no matter how harmless a, a line might be. Alex Spears' book is out right now. I don't know if you've even seen it, Mookie, but there's apparently uh, a portion of it where he talks about you and he talks about you know, trying to acclimate yourself with the roster, and you were having some difficulty doing it early on. Obviously, first year. Your first year. Obviously, it's a lot different. That suddenly sparks conversation, and this is what we do every day. This is our job, like you have your job. We're sitting there going, oh, my God, does that mean Mookie wants out? Does it? Now, I, I know that both of you 
Well, you have a little bit more control, I think, than, than you do. But you don't have total control over where you're going with your career. But do you get sick of it? That the fans talk about it. The, the media talks about it. Right? The people don't necessarily know enough about you, Mookie, to know whether you like Boston or not. I've heard that. I don't know. Does Mookie like Boston? And then you answer the question and you go, no, I like Boston. I like... It's almost like they don't yeah, believe Yeah, but I don't it. believe I don't them. believe them. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear the way he said it? I don't like, know. <laughs> so I'm wondering, does this stuff drive you crazy? And how can you answer that question and ba- basically calm everybody down? Or, or I don't think you can, can you? Because of the uncertainty. I mean, no matter what I say, they're going to, you know, people are going to have their opinions and there's nothing you can do about that. But I've, you know, made it made it known. I, this is my second home. You know, I've, I've been here. This is all I know. You know, I, I love to hear and I love the, the fans, the, everybody, my teammates, um, you know, the front office, everybody here. But, you know, that doesn't uh, doesn't change the business of baseball and, you know, kind of uh, what, what value is there. And you know, I don't want to go all down that, that down that path, but I mean, just for people who don't think I enjoy it here. I, I love it here. This is this is you know I come here in the winter time just to come hang out with friends and, and, and whatnot. We come. My family loves coming up here and going to do things. So it's uh it's nothing. It's not that I don't like Boston at all. Are you sort of anticipating? Because I think the discussion goes to free agent. You know you've handled it in the past. You've gone to arbitration. That this off season is kind of a crossroads. Even though you have a year left, where it's do they really want to wait and risk him leaving? Do they need an extension this year? If not, do they trade him? I mean, these are the sort of things that are kind of floating out there. Do you feel like this off season is important about your future in Boston? Uh, I mean, you know, that's for for you know the front office and those guys to decide. You know, right now I'm, I got one more year here. You know, yeah. and I'm going to enjoy it the same way I've enjoyed my past years here. And so, um, you know, that's uh, that's not, not something that I, I don't even focus on. You know, I just uh, know that. Right now, I'm still a Red Sox, and you know, I'm happy with it. So, JD, do you get people sitting there going, "Hey, you're gonna opt out? You're gonna leave us? You're gonna?" Yeah. And do uh, they say it like that? Uh, <laughs> hey, hey, JD. In a way, hey, in a way. I do you like it? <laughs> the pizza shop down the street, or what? While you're in line? <laughs> nah, no, they. I mean, they hit you up. They ask you, like, "So you're gonna stay here next year? What's what, you're gonna opt out?" And I'm just like, "I just, I don't know. Coffee. I'm just worried about right now. That's the last thing I'm thinking about. You know." Um, when the media asked me, I always tell him, I said, uh, you know, Scott Boris? I said, call him up. You know, he's, he's the guy that's going to help me with that decision. He's not responding to you that. You know, so, <laughs> yeah, is, I let him worry about that. So. Is there, um, I don't know if you guys care about this or if it's even a big deal. I just, you know, you look at some of these other teams and the stadiums that they play in and the fact that nobody goes to the games. And, I mean, it's, it's got to make you feel good, I'm assuming. Like, when you guys play here, people are in the stands. People are cheering you on. I mean, I, you see some of these other things. Yeah, I'm sure you've seen it. It's it's a different it's, ballpark. It's got to try. I, I feel like that's got to be worth something. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely different. Um, you know, I was in Houston when Houston was bad, and there was mm-hmm. probably I think ten thousand people in the stands. It felt mm-hmm. like. Yeah. Um, then I went to Detroit, and they were good, and they'd be sold out every night. It'd be a Tuesday day game, and people are there people don't work i don't know they love it (laughs) and then i go to arizona and it's the same thing as it was in houston no winning team but the fans just aren't there and then you kind of come here and it's sold out every night um so i mean there's definitely something to it it's exciting you know i always say like last year my first year here it's like it's august you're tired but the fans are still they're still in it Mm -hmm. and that kind of gives you that that energy you Mm -hmm. know that that like dang there's a lot of energy in the yeah, stadium you have a reason to yeah go you to work have, and it's like yeah, you, you feel the energy yeah. it's like legal greenies back when <laughs> i was playing you know what i mean it's like you get that energy I just, I just we used like, to do it differently so they got through okay. august and I, september that was saying. it i think it would like drive you you come out of the dugout and there's just nobody there like, it's tough it's, it's like tough. how do you it get is. excited well, to tampa, go to work tampa's a great example good yeah. team and nothing Every night, there's what twelve well, thousand. They, they cheer for the Red Sox. Yeah. They cheer they for cheer the Red, Red, Red Sox. Yeah. Fans yeah. More Red Sox. Than there are. It's a lot fans. more. Uh, you have to have a lot more self-drive in those situations. Yeah. You know, I had to deal with it. And you know, in Arizona last year, it was kind of the same. Not last year in seventeen. Uh, same situation. You know, it's September. We're in the wild card, and we're still getting 12, 12 thirteen thousand. It felt like at a game, and it's one of those things where you kind of have to pump yourself up. Where here, you come out here, and it's just like. Man, let's go. You know, the yep. fan, everyone's ready. Everyone's, yep. you know, especially when, you know, when the Yankees come in town, it yeah. feels like a playoff game. Yeah. Uh, so it's definitely special. There's something to it. Like you said, it's it's nice. You know, it, it's nice to play, play in front of pan, fans that are so passionate. Yeah. The same way that I am about the game. 
you know, but at the same time, it's tough. There's, you know, there's, there's a plus and a minus, too, about it because you, if you're not playing good, they're <laughs> going to let you know. Yeah. And they're going to sit there and they're going to bash you and they're going to talk about you. And I remember last year I got booed because I, I tried to steal second base. <laughs> I got thrown out. I got the steal side. I got booed <laughs> as I was coming in the dugout. And I was like, dude, we're like 15 games <laughs> in first place right now. I'm getting booed. <laughs> right? And that's, that's how they are. You know, they, they love their sports and, you know, it's, there's – there, there's a positive and a negative to it. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, I would think those race players could walk walk the streets of Tampa, and at times nobody knows who they are. 100%. You guys walk. You guys walk into a restaurant, and it's like, hey, you were one. You were one for five the last inning, <laughs> right? Yeah. That's what you hear. So stats. true. Yeah, yep. they run it down. Hey guys, we really appreciate you coming down, obviously, yeah, and helping out guys. the Jimmy Fon and meeting some of the kids. This was uh, really cool for them, and we really appreciate it. JD Martinez, Mookie Betts, thank you. Thank Continue you, guys. success for the rest of the year. Okay. All right, fellas.